That's the reality of it. Where you get the truth, the truth where you get the, the real, real. Yeah. where you get to see all the things that's going on all around you. And we tell it like it is. Hello. Welcome to Best Reality of It. I'm William. And I'm Maisha. Yeah, I remember that time, right? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> so, we got another fantastic show. We got some fantastic guests. Yes, and we do. Especially the one that you uh, interviewed for, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Yes, Attorney Cooper. Attorney Cooper. Attorney Cooper, yes. Board of Education. Sharp, 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 mm -hmm. sharp. Sharp shooter. Sharp guy, too. Yeah. Sharp guy. Yeah. So when we come back, we've got some more exciting information for you that you definitely don't want to miss. Don't go anywhere. So I switched my car insurance to State Farm. I say 480 bucks. You know what that is? Yeah. Don't say it. You know what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't. It's a lot of dough. Switch and you could save 480 bucks with State Farm. It's a lot of dough. See if Bryant Jenkins in Reistertown can save you a lot of dough. Get to a better state. State Farm. At Liberty Animal Clinic, they know that your pet is a member of the family and you want to make sure they are healthy and receive excellent care. Their top veterinarians and staff will treat them like family and give the best care, medical treatment, and attention you can get anywhere. Liberty Animal Clinic provides these excellent services and they are open six days a week, including giving them a complete physical and office hours are by appointment, so please call. Let your extended family join us! Welcome back to Let's Talk with Maisha. I am here with June, also known as Saida Shakur, and Mr. Allen. And we have a, uh, we're talking about a serious topic, uh, abuse, sexual abuse. Okay? Yes. So we ended with the, the last um, time we talked about what you have gone through and what your mom has gone through. Correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And Mr. Allen, you have some specific questions. About the repeat, the repeated violation that took place. Right. For those who may not have seen the show last week, mm -hmm. give us some initial background of what, uh, sure. where we got up to this point, and then we get into the other part. Of course, yes. Um, so I wrote the book entitled February, which is based on uh, my my the the character being assaulted. Um, however, the main point was because after the assault occurred, the rapist who becomes the father of February's baby does not want to be a part of that baby's life, that child's life. So he just utterly denies uh, that he's the father and having any type of interaction on the uh, growth and development of Feb February's child. Okay, yeah. and you mentioned that the rapist, that uh, February's your mom, mm -hmm. and the child is yourself. Yes. And the rapist, um, the first time the you were, your mom was raped, um, she didn't produce a child. No. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. And at that point, she didn't tell anyone because she was worried about how it would affect the uh, friend of the rapist. Is that correct? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a little different than that. It's not so much the friend of the rapist because my, she, she had a boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. who happened to be a rival, if you would, mm -hmm. with the rapist. Who had a boyfriend? Oh, uh, no, February. February. So um, February was actually dating the rival, mm -hmm. but the rival and uh, the rapist, they always had competition with one another mm -hmm. from the sports, being basketball, to cars, to the females. So do you think that the rivalry between the two, um, the, the rapist took that as an opportunity to commit that and use that with him not liking the other guy? You know, I don't think that was the whole thing, um, and and really, I to be honest, it doesn't I, matter. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just know that it happened. You know, yeah. and she again was a friend to her rapist sister. And so she had a lot of fear. So do you think she didn't say anything because she was so afraid of this person and? And didn't want to damage the relationship, okay. you know, with the sister, mm -hmm. um, and then upsetting her parents. Um, he said he wouldn't do it again okay. when she confronted him, because she did confront him. She why, did. Yeah, and questioned, you know, why he had the actions he did, 
he just said he wouldn't do it again. But it happened again. How old was she? She was 15. When it first happened the first time? I'm not sure. I want to say yes. But, between but I know the second time she was definitely 15 because okay. that's when she got pregnant with me. Okay, so that explains why she really didn't go any further with it because at 15 years old, you yeah. really don't know what to do. Right. And that's you're right. afraid. And like that stigma of them saying, well, she wanted it and this, that, that sort of thing uh, was something that I can understand why she kept that to herself. Yeah. She probably didn't that's want her friends knowing as well. That's a lot to bear when you're violated and you're pregnant and you have to go through these relationships that you feel like are um, positive relationships being um, jeopardized to turn into something negative. Exactly. That's way too much to bear. Exactly. And to bring it back to the fact of the guy who she was dating at the time, they both were about to graduate and go on to college and had scholarships. So, again, she was trying to, I guess carry the weight, if you would, and keep everybody out of trouble. Um, I just think she didn't know what to do because, one, she had the boyfriend, and when she told him about the first encounter, he really wanted to get the revenge for her, but she talked him out of it. Mm -hmm. okay. But when it happened the second time, it was like, okay, this needs to come out. The parents need to be aware of what's going on. Um, and then, of course, at that time, there had been other rumors that other women had been violated by the same person. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, um, and nobody told on this guy. They told. Mm -hmm. People told. But not the police. No, the police was not involved. So there's a such thing as we know as natural consequences or karma. Exactly. So, did anything eventually catch up with this person? Me writing my book. Okay, exposure. Okay, let me ask you another question. Now, the second time, you said. Your mom was raped. She went to her, her grandparents. To her parents, parents. To her my parents, grandparents. Right? Mm -hmm. And I can see her being afraid to go to the police because she's very young. She don't know what's going to happen when she goes there. But why didn't the parents reach? I mean, Fifteen is statutory rape. Okay, rape that's statutory. Even if he didn't do anything, it's still rape. Why didn't the parents go to the police? and report this guy, and for DNA or, or, or swabs, they could determine that he did this. My grandparents, I don't really know why they didn't go to the police, but I know my grandmother was a staunch Baptist, and her method was, we want to deal with this ourselves. So they didn't feel the need to bring the police in because when my grandparents went to the other grandmother, she worked with my grandparents, that my other grandparents worked with my, my maternal grandparents. So that pretty much is what kept everything at bay from being, you know, taken Exposed. to the police. And again, we're talking about 1969 here, okay. where police wasn't really favored in our community, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. Um, if they want to know more about your book. Um, February, mm -hmm. how can we find your book? Okay, you can order February uh, through me. You can actually find me on Facebook. I am on Facebook by my government name, which is June Makel. Um, also, my publisher is Ex Libris, okay. and that's X L I B R I S. Mm -hmm. It can be found on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com as well. Thank you so much, Saida Shakur, Thank you. for coming and talking about. That's I think great. it takes a lot of courage to come and share something so deep and personal and intimate about your life. But I know that you're going to help so many other people. And yes. I appreciate you for opening up your life to the world. Thank like you. This. Thank you so much. One other, one other thing I want to say is, those who are viewing, make sure that if you're violated in any kind of way, go to the police, no matter what the situation, have it documented that you went to the police. Because if you don't, these perpetrators of these rape that are doing to uh, women will keep going, will continue. Like back in your day, 69 was harder. But you, like you said earlier, he kept doing this to other women. And I want to add this too, you can also go to the hospital. If you right. don't want the police to get involved, you can go to the hospital and even if you do not tell them what happened, mm -hmm. they have systems in place where they can kind of they know mm -hmm. when people come in and they've been hurt physically emotionally sexually abused and then they have systems in place that they will offer support 
to you as well. And they would get the authorities involved. Now back in that day when your mom was, they may have been that exactly. uh, compelling to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, so we just want you to know that there's avenues uh, because at these days and times, if you don't do something, they're just going to keep on doing the same thing. And might I add, for those who are estranged from their parents, it is not your fault. You don't have to be full of shame. I do have a form that uh, where we will be discussing whatever the experience may be because there are different reasons people are estranged from their parents. It may not be as my experience, it might be based on race. You know, because back in the 60s, you had people who may have had a white mother, but the mother could not raise that child, gave her up for adoption and was raised by a black family. It could be cases where incest has occurred and the secret is being kept from that child or from you if you are the child. Do not feel ashamed. Do not be embarrassed. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk with Maisha. If having healthy teeth and gums are important to you, be aware of these potential dangers. Premature loss of teeth, severe gum disease, bleeding gums, constant bad breath, and even cancer. So don't play around with your dental health. Go where the best dental experts are, Northwest Dental. The extraordinary family and general dentistry at Northwest Dental help avoid those serious dental problems. And their dentists will give you the best dental care you can get anywhere. Call Northwest Dental because your teeth are too important not to. Okay, Lexington Market. We went back down there. Yes, we did. We had a good time. Yes, we did. The place is fantastic. We met so many different people down there from all over the world. Of course. Yeah, so don't go thinking one thing. Right. You'll be pleasantly surprised. So it's not just about food. No, it's not about just about food. Mm -hmm. Although the food is great. Yeah, the food is delicious. Delicious. Whatever your heart's desire. It's seafood. Um, they had a whole seafood um, restaurant, like um, faders market. Fady, Fady. It's like a, a seafood market. Place? Right, right. It's called. I think it's called F A I D L E Y. So okay. I may be saying it wrong. I think it's Fadely. Oh, but, um, okay. but if I'm saying it wrong, I've got the spelling there. But the fantastic. Okay. They have yeah. all kinds of seafood. They yes, got they do. Crab cake. Crab cakes are big, man. Yes. I mean, like this big. Mm -hmm. They had the fish, the raw bar. Yeah, no, I'm not into the clams and stuff. No, like that. the clams and oysters. No, no. Oh, you like clams and oysters? Yes, they're they're aphrodisiacs. What does that mean? Google it. <laughs> you know Google it. <laughs> aphrodisiac. I heard that right. Yeah. The stimulus, the stimulus, and all that kind they're of stuff. They're good for you. They're muscles. Yeah, man, but it's just so. Well, a lot of people like it. Though. Yeah. A lot of people like it, but I just can't get with it. You know, it ain't cooked. It ain't for me. Well, they had shrimp and um. So. The, the seafood, the big fish, and everything's fresh. Like they just brought it off the yeah. ship. Yeah. Everything's fresh. Yeah. And uh, and then we went to um, the floors. It's called oh, Lexington yeah. Floors. So you know it's not just food. They had right. floors flowers. there. They fresh had market, cut flowers. Fresh cut flowers. And the way they were organized and arranged. Mm -hmm. And even though she didn't say much, mm -hmm. um, you can go online and place your order. I like that too. Okay. So she must have been. Um, able to reach the technology, the people with the techies of the world. And order your flowers online, go in there and pick them up. She may not do a lot of talking, but the, the arrangement will be nice. Yeah, because she started, we, she showed us how she started before the styrofoam. It's called yeah. Lexington Floors. Yeah. Started from the styrofoams, and she went from the styrofoams to different uh, ornaments, uh, garland around the styrofoam. Mm -hmm. By the time she was finished, that ornament beautiful. That was beautiful. Yes. Then she has bouquets that she makes. Yes, right she does. Spots. Yeah. Did you see any roses? I saw I saw a lot of flowers. Roses, yeah. carnations. There were so many flowers. If you're into flowers, you can just go there and just hang out there mm -hmm. in that shop and see so many different things. Every mm -hmm. type of flower and arrangement she can make, yeah. she makes for you. Right in the heart of Baltimore, at Lexington Market. Who knew? Who knew? Well, they know now. Yeah. But a lot of people didn't know about Lexington Market. I was surprised. Oh, yeah. Like the young generation oh, don't know. Oh, they know about Lexington Market. They know Market. about it now. Yeah. They definitely yeah. know about so it now. So we're back. Lexington Market is back. And you, and make sure if, you, if you've been gone, come back. Because yeah. everybody's coming back to Lexington And if you need your shoes fixed, too. Oh, yeah. They had a place for shoes and yeah. making keys because he showed us how he did it. Actually, I was thinking about buying some new shoes. I think I'm just going to take my old shoes down uh -huh. there. And because he did, he had all those types of machines. Upgrade. Upgrade, you know. Mm -hmm. He did the heels, he did the soles, he did the polish. No, restore. Restore. Okay, yeah. So you're going to work with what you got. Right. Okay. 
All right. And he did. By the time he finished with that shoe, he was showing us right. Mm -hmm. That shoe looked brand new. Wow. And 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 the, probably a lot less expensive than buying a brand new pair of shoes. Right. Okay. And then he also makes keys. Some guy came in down the keys. He, I got you. Some key. Pam. 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 I mean, Multitask. <laughs> So you just don't go to Lexington Market just for the right. food, although the food is delicious. Yes. I mean. The and reasonable. And reasonable. Yeah. Because it's a lot. People from all over, like I said, the world go to now, Lexington Market. was everything just cash? So we didn't. No, they we, do, they do uh, credit cards too. They take cards as well? They take credit cards. See? They take cash. No excuses. No excuses. Yeah. Best prices. Best fresh food. Yeah. Good tasting food. And my dad plays in a band. He played so in the band have, down there too, right? Yeah, a lot. I, one day I was down there, my, my dad played in the band, and we all were dancing. That's what I like. I like the people that were there. Everybody just danced and had a good time. Good time good. And then people had their phones recording. You so wrapped up into the music and the culture. and It, it, it was just nice. Yeah, they have a lot of activities down there as well as... I like the they fact exercise that, and fitness. And health fairs. Yes. Like health fairs mm -hmm. in there. Get your diabetes done. Uh, t checked on. A lot of things they do down there, but um, the Peanut Man, the Peanut Man outside, he's the been there forever. forever. When you walk down the street, you can just smell the aroma. Everything, yes. There. So make sure you get down to Lexington Market. Remember, it's not just the food; they got the flowers, they got the shoes, they have the uh, health food. They yeah. even have a market inside the market. Yeah, Those, they do. And there's two. There's two. Right. Or, or two sides of the street, right? Right. I'm talking about inside the Lexington Market. Yes. Where inside of there is another. Like a grocery store. Oh. You didn't see that? No, I missed that. Yep, they got groceries. It's something that you have to go back in. And see it over You may over. not be able to catch it all the first time. Right. Yeah. Right. So. But it's, but it's awesome. I like so it. So make sure you get down to Lexington Market on Utah Street, downtown Baltimore. Utah Street. I thought it was Packer. No, it's Utah. It's not on Lexington Street? Well, part of it's on Packer. And it's too. huge. It's huge. So part so of it's on like Packer. So it's like four block radius. Right, right. So one half, one part is Packer, one part is uh, Utah. Okay, and they have a parking lot. Parking. Mm -hmm. Reasonable parking. Exactly. Yeah. To so. For, you know, downtown Baltimore, you know. And then all of the trains and the, the transit goes there. and Transit goes there. The buses yeah. go there. The light rail is close. Light rail is close. Mm -hmm. In fact, the light rail Subway. goes there. Subway goes there. Yeah. Uh, you, what's it? Uh, Uber goes there. <laughs> <laughs> Taxis go there. Everybody yeah. goes there. And it's so close to the neighborhood that you can walk there. And it's close to the harbor. To the Can you walk there from the harbor? To the sure, harbor from sure. It's not far. Yeah. May, I may not because, oh, see, okay. I've got two blocks, man. I'm done. If you're in a walk in and exploring downtown, you gotta yeah. go to Lexington Market. Lexington Market. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's time to hit the trails on a bike from the Pikesville Bicycle Shop. They have all makes and models for all ages and sizes, and they'll service your bike and customize it to fit your needs. So for the very best variety of bikes, the best service and price, come to Pikesville Bicycle Shop or call 410-602-BIKE and take advantage of our special deals. I love my hero. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Maisha. Today I have the honor of having with me Attorney Cooper. We were in class together in 2017, GBC class together, and he was gracious enough to come and share some of the information that's going on. Like when I look at you, Mr. Cooper, your brain is always ticking, always <laughs> something going on up there. And um, I'm glad to have you on the show. I'm so glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Oh, uh, you asked a very broad question there. I mean, I'm and born and raised here in Baltimore City. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, born and raised uh, between uh, Emerson Village and Cherry Hill. Um, attended. What was it, 159, 164? <laughs> you telling your Southwest age, Southwestern High School, okay. uh, Hamilton Junior High at the time. I attended now, I think it's Hamilton Middle. And so I'm born and raised here. Uh, attended Catonsville Community College, which I think is now Baltimore Com County Community College. Okay. Attended University of Maryland, uh, undergrad, mm -hmm. graduated there, and then attended University of Maryland School of Law. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been practicing law? I have been practicing law. This will be, this is 2018, so this will be 16 years. 16 years. Yes. And when we met in 2017, you were actually on the Board of Education. Yes, I was the chair of the Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners, yes. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit how, about how you um, got on the board or? Yeah, so what, the way the school board works in Baltimore City, in most places in the country, school 
board members are elected. Um, however, in Baltimore City, um, there was an agreement between the city and the state that school board members for Baltimore City would be appointed. And they would be appointed by both the mayor and the governor. Um, that has now since changed as a result of a law that was passed, I believe, in 2016. However, when I was applying in 2012 or 2011, Basically, I had to submit a letter of interest, three recommendations, and then I went through a process of being interviewed by the Maryland State Department of Education, then being interviewed by the governor's secretary of appointments, uh, then was interviewed by about 10 or 12 uh, community groups, which included groups like the ACLU, the Baltimore Teachers Union, uh, various other groups. Wow. And then by the mayor of Baltimore City. Oh, wow. It's then, almost like you have to cut your, cut your thumb off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process. It was a process. So how was, how was it, um, what's your take on your journey, um, actually being on the board and seeing some of the issues? You, you got to see a lot of the financial issues, um, the systemic, some of the very deep-seated issues that we have within our school system. The being on the school board was the most educational experience I think I've ever had. Um, and I would say that because... Education, I will say, is the um, is what we talk about, but it's really about politics and money. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, you're talking about in Baltimore City specifically a one point three billion dollar budget, and that budget is dictated by seventy five percent of the money coming from the state, mm -hmm. and therefore you have a lot of interest, a lot of perspectives from other legislators in the state that aren't here in Baltimore City that see that amount of money going to Baltimore City and not necessarily seeing the kind of results that people think that should be happening as a result of that type of money. Um, as I sat on the board, what I would tell you is, unfortunately in urban districts, and I've, I've served on national, uh, the, the Maryland Association of Boards of Education, I've served on the uh, executive committee for the Council of Great City Schools, uh, uh, which is a national organization. Uh, participate with the National School Board Association. I currently do some work with them now. And what I will tell you is, in urban districts, in uh, whether it be here, whether it be St. Louis, whether it be Little Rock, whether it be Toledo, uh, the problems are all the same. Are we going into funding, the funding piece? Is that trickling into that? Um, well, it's, it's, About how the, the inner school systems are funded or the trickling of the, the, the funds? to get into the schools, to provide the resources, how it trickles down, is that kind of... The challenge with the funding is there is there's the position that it takes more money to educate a child that is growing up in, in a low-income, impoverished community, and therefore okay. more money is needed. So the same dollars here in Baltimore are different in... Uh, say, Howard County, not because of the dollar amount, okay. but because of the student environment. This is very interesting. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk with Maisha. For all your pharmacy needs and prescriptions, call Pharmacy Solutions, LLC, the community pharmacy the mayor honored for its commitment in providing the community with affordable prescriptions. Pharmacy Solutions takes your health very personally with patient consultation and a patient assistance program for the uninsured and those with specialty drug needs. To learn more about the program and how to transfer your prescriptions to Pharmacy Solutions, LLC, call them today because they breathe life back into our community. Hey, Baltimore, what time is it? It's Crab Time! And they are at United Crab and Seafood, the home of the half bushel, where we believe the best crabs are the best deal. They have the best crabs and seafood platter in town all year round. And they have catering for all occasions and events. Go to their website and see their extensive seafood menu. United Crab and Seafood, located on Liberty Road near Northern Parkway. You know, Santa, I've been a really good girl this year. So I'm just saying, Santa baby, to slip a stable under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Yeah.
Santa cutie A 54 convertible to light blue I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby So hurry down the chimney tonight Oh, oh, oh. think of all the fun I've missed Think of all the guys that I haven't kissed Next year I'll be just as good If you check off my Christmas list Okay, we got some more information that people had to uh, adjust to and, yes. and absorb. Yes, yes. It, it was, it was. I don't Interesting, know. depending upon what your interest is. You know, we have all different types of people. People make the world go round. So some weeks we have drama, intense, and then others we have resources and information that people may want to just uh, board. Exactly. School board, yeah. So we have everything that you need to know or want to find out about. Eventually, it's going to be on this show. Yes. Eventually, we may not have it every week, but eventually, you're going to have it on the show. And if you have ideas that you want us to put on the show, email us. Yeah, we like talking to people and hearing your thoughts and ideas. And if anything you want to say, great, we appreciate it. Anything you want to say that's not great, I don't want to hear from you. No more kidding. You can say that too. You Just can handle those things. I'll go in the corner and cry. Woo. You go cry. Yeah, I can handle it because it it, it, it it's helps. the reality. And it helps make the show even better. I think so. Yep. Yeah. Get that opinion because we want to keep it real up there. Absolutely. All right. So when God gives you another day, that's another opportunity to do the right thing. Do not blow that opportunity. Be blessed. Put God first because through Him all things are possible. And have a very Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Amen. <laughs>